Jackson, David Mark from ABC. Um, can you explain what it felt like on the field? You dominated that, it seemed like you dominated that first 25 minutes and then once the, the French scored their first goal, the game changed. Can you tell me what the change was on the pitch and what you were trying to do to resurrect things? Um, well, I think naturally, after we scored, um, they get a burst of energy and, you know, um, that kind of wake-up call, I guess. So naturally, they're going to step their levels up. And, um, you know, that's probably a lesson for us to learn when you're, when you're trying to play out of a compact shape um, to try and, you know, be stronger in those moments. And losing a goal, first goal from a second, st second phase of a set piece, obviously disappointing as well, um, considering, like, we, we were, thought we were still in a pretty good position in terms of the way we were playing at that time but yeah lessons to be learnt but um, obviously that positive was the fact that we started the game so well and, and had such a good spell during that period. Can you explain what the feeling was like when they were getting on top and they started to dominate in play and to dominate play and you were trying to get back into the game? Yeah, yeah I think we handled it pretty well um, you know for a young a lot of young players and guys with first experience playing at this in this competition at this level um, kept the composure generally um, throughout the game and obviously individual mistakes were punished at, at other stages of the game but um, I think the mentality is always there we've got such a good um, belief in what we're trying to do and the way we want to play and I don't think that ever you know I don't think anyone was ever really um, you know overall by even when they you know their, their game was raised I think we, we tried to keep doing sticking to the plan and and uh, yeah doing what we, what we went out there to do. Jackson, Mark Schwarzer, Optus Sport. Just want to know um, what the general feeling is amongst the group after a performance like last night, well, more so the result, and secondly, how you feel physically, um, having covered more sprints than anyone else on the pitch last night? Yeah, um, obviously the first kind of feeling is disappointment coming off the pitch, but um, I think there's a lot to take from that, especially, again, as I mentioned, um, with the squad we have and, you know, the... To feel disappointed and feel like something kind of got away from me a little bit against the world champions, against players of that caliber, uh, is a huge testament to the mentality of the group and um, that desire to win, I guess, and, and get results. And um, you know, it's definitely something that we have in us all the time, and we'll continue to have going into these next couple of, of huge games. But um, you know, physically, obviously, it's a, it's a quick quick turnaround, but something that most of us who have played in Europe are, are pretty used to and. Um, you know, for myself, it's, you know, this is yeah pretty normal to be able to try and back up you know big physical performances like that, and you know I'll be ready ready to go on, on Saturday. Absolutely no problems. Steve Lark and AOP Jackson. I think you said after the game that you were confident that my, that you could bounce back quickly. I'm just interested. A, have you actually discussed France as a collective yet? And B. How, how quickly do you shelve that game and then focus on Tunisia? Yeah, we had obviously discussions after the game, kind of you dissect it, but it's still quite raw, as I'm sure you know. most people know. When you first come off the pitch, it's everything's still so fresh. You can't really see it, things uh, too clearly. So you know, we'll look back at those some of those things today, but the mentality has to be to move on quickly. Um, obviously, we analyse where we can improve, look at what we did well and what we can take forward, but... Um, yeah, generally speaking, the mentality is already switched into focusing on the next game and using last night as a you know as a platform to build into Saturday rather than you know overthinking you know kind of how that game went. Uh, Jackson, Joey Lynch from ESPN. Just could you just walk us through in the opening 10, 15 minutes when you're really on top? As you gave us a bit of an insight last night, what you were trying to do, get out in the counter, low, hard balls into the box, and you could see Nate was inverting during possession. You were getting up high with Riley as well. What were you, how were you trying to beat the French in that opening exchange? What went so right tactically? Um, it wasn't so much about doing anything specifically to this French team. That's just the... You know the game plan that we always try and approach the game with, and you know obviously we focus a lot on ourselves and the way we want to we want to play with the ball. And um, you know, obviously a lot of that went went right early doors. We were getting ourselves in in the areas in which we we felt, feel obviously we could hurt them, but we can hurt any team. And um, obviously it led to to scoring the goal with you know a great bit of quality um, from Lex and, and a great finish. So um, yeah, I think there's not a huge focus on 
in terms of what we could actually have done to affect that team. Obviously, we take small details like the counter attacks, like trying to play certain kinds of, of crosses against the defenders who like to defend a certain way. But um, that's just small details within a framework of you know of what we try to do all, all the time. Well, in terms of the small details that you'd be working on, you've got Tunisia coming up and they're a rather jarring juxtaposition with the French. The French so much attacking talent, the Tunisians such an excellent mid and low block. They'll sit back and defend like their lives depend on it. What little details do you need to get right to break them down? Yeah, obviously that's something we'll, we'll look forward to these next couple of days. As, we, as I said, after we kind of... Um, uh, first get through the analysis of last night and then as you say those details that we can take forward into that into that type of game which is obviously going to be a very different opposition very different um the game will flow in a totally different way um but you know first things first as you say against a team that 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 can play so compact and and in that way um you're going to have to find different ways to create chances and um you know we've got We've got the quality of players who can who can play in those areas out wide or in between the lines and, and create chances and score goals. Hey Jackson, Adrian Archuleta from SBS. Are you prepared to have sustained periods of possession, and how are you planning to break them down? Yeah, same way we always try and break the, break teams down. You know, we we want to um, you know we work on our structures, our patterns, and and as I say, those details can change. You know, small details can change depending on the opposition. As you say, we'll look at where the best areas we can to hurt them, but none of that really changes in the framework of what we always try and do so everybody's you know always got a, a good idea of the structure of the way we want to play and as you say um, working with the analysts and the staff we'll, we'll, we'll get those fine details into tune these next couple of days of, of how we can hurt this specific opposition. Uh, Jackson, Emma Kemp here from The Guardian. Um, you just mentioned overthinking before, and I'm just wondering how you stop yourself overthinking about the stakes now because they're a little bit heightened, especially given the goal difference. Um, yeah, to a certain extent. Um, you know, I think as as a group, we've got a really good... Um, a really good feeling and a really good culture of, of being able to push each other forward very quickly. We always have had that. And, um, you know, as, as an older player now, that's something I've probably had to adapt with and change as well as you know not you know, just focus on yourself you've got to help other players as well move on very quickly and um, of course now the stakes are higher for the second game but at the end of the day coming into this tournament you know you're gonna to have to get two positive results to progress and we've still got full belief that that's more than possible and we've and, and you know achievable Jackson Vince Rigari from the SMH mate hope you're well um Adam Krustic wasn't used last night. Arnie said he was looking at using him off the bench. Do you know if he's going to be right for this Tunisia year game? And if so, how important he, he will be? You know, he's obviously a, a pivotal player in the Socceroos team and that looks like a, a game where he's going to be very important. Is it not a famous regard quote? I'm not a doctor, mate. <laughs> I don't know, well um, You know, uh, <laughs> so I could, couldn't help myself. Um, he's... Um, Aiden's a quality player. We'll obviously want him out on the pitch um, as soon as he's available. Um, obviously, circumstances dependent. <laughs> so, <sorry. laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's a quality player. Um, obviously, fans and players alike, we want to see him out there. And um, when he's available, I'm sure he'll play, have a big role to play over these next couple of games. An assist on my own goal there. there we go. <laughs> um, look, to change things up quite dramatically then after that Jack I'd look a lot of football chat here yeah. just wondering if you've had an opportunity to think about this tournament more broadly I know you have before you got here the video and everything there's been a lot that's been going on since with the the one love armbands Gianni Infantino's speech the other day um, just wondering what you've you've made of it all yeah it's a tough one to dissect obviously it's been changing by the day um, changes obviously through Regulation and then changes through decisions that teams have made and players have made. Um, you know, it's tough to react when things change so quickly for, for, for those players and those teams. Um, but I think, you know, when all is said and done, I think there'll be a time to, yeah, really dissect how these messages, that those messages have, have gone out and in the way that they chose to do it. And um, all I can say, speak from our point of view and you know, obviously how proud I am of our, of our squad and um, the clear and the clear position that we took coming into this tournament um, that didn't leave anything to kind of there was no possibility to kind of have that change thrown on us at, uh, you know, at, a, at a late stage so um, from our perspective obviously 
you know that's that's what we why we wanted to we chose to do that and the, the timing in which we did it as well so um yeah obviously it's difficult to speak for those for those other countries i know if i had to start on the yellow card i'd be in a right pickle so I, I can totally understand how that um you know affects different players so um but you know i think um when you put yourself in a position where you've maybe not made your position totally clear and you know the gesture that you have chosen to take is uh, put in a you know there's certain different circumstances coming on around that then it becomes difficult to react especially in such a short space of time so um, you know I'm sure as I say um, I'm sure when the tournament's over there'll be a time to kind of dissect that in a deeper way because it's, it's a tough one to kind of deal with as you're focusing on performance and, and, and playing games as, as all those countries are uh, Tracy Holmes, ABC. Um, I, it's not the time for this discussion, but since that was the last question, I, I will ask it. Do you think the Socceroos are going to apply uh, an equal amount of focus on Australia's own failings in the human rights area, particularly with regard to the Indigenous population? We've got the worst incarceration rates of Indigenous people in the world. Um, and then as a second question completely back to the game yesterday, were you able to get home and put the disappointment of the loss behind you and spend some time celebrating Craig Goodwin scoring a goal in the World Cup, putting you ahead of the world champions? Well, I'll start with that. Um, I, sit next to, I sit next to Goody in the meal room and um, the first thing we did, I think we sat down and we tried to count how many um, soccerers have scored at a World Cup. I think he's the seventh. It's an incredible achievement. First one to score from open play in, since 2014. Um, against the world champions, it's an incredible moment for him and his family. Obviously, big picture is disappointment from the result of the game, but you can't help but um, look at those individual moments for a player in their career and what that means. And um, you know, he's a fantastic bloke and couldn't be happier for him. So I think, um, yeah, we we did have that. We were able to kind of look at that small that part of the game and and celebrate that for him. So. Um, Again, for, and confidence that will bring him moving forward in the tournament as well. So, and everybody. And so, yeah. And on the second part, um, I think this has been like a, a long process and a journey that the national team we've been on as players throughout this process of leading up to making obviously the statement that we made and um, being a part of conversations with you know important organisations that, that work in these spaces. Um, I hope it's something as a team that we do continue to talk about. Um, I think. I've commented in the past on, you know, problems that we have at home, as you know, as much as the issues that we've talked about here. Obviously, us as players and being a part of this tournament, we are so intrinsically linked to to these issues at this time. That's why we felt it was, you know, people talk about the hypocrisy of talking about these issues and not talking about ones that happen at home. But I hope that's something that we continue to explore in the future and as part of our growth as a team and as as individuals. Um, but, you know, that's something to, to look at, um, you know, moving forward. Jackson Sam McClure from 3AW Radio. Um, you mentioned a little earlier that you wanted to use the game against France as a platform and take the things that you did well last night into Saturday. What are they in your mind? And when the Socceroos are the best version of themselves, what does that look like, do you think? Um, I think, obviously, when we were on the front foot early in the game, um, we looked totally different kind of threat um, obviously you've got to be aware of the the individual quality of the opposition and especially the, you know when you're playing against players of that pace and you don't want to be leaving too much space um, in behind but I think when we played on the front foot we pressed high that was obviously um, where we had our most joy um, but also there were good stages of the game where we when we sat in that mid block and were compact um, you know as you say most of the goals came from the quality, their quality out in, in 1v1 situations in wide areas and crosses into the box and um, you know our, a, lot of, a lot of our plan was about you know closing that centre of the pitch stop in their combination play and you know there were stages of the game where we did that really well um, so there, as you say defensively and with the ball um, there were things that moments that we did well some of our play in the our play in the wide areas was excellent as well so um, you know there's, there's little bits and pieces from, from everywhere on the pitch I think um, that we can do better on, of course, but also moments in the game in which um, you know can build us into into the next game. And I don't think there was any one thing that we did particularly poorly or particularly brilliantly in the game. You know, I think it was a bit of 
um, a bit of both. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to, as I say, look at a game as a whole and, and take that into Saturday. Hey, Jackson. Uh, Jack Hart, Stats Perform. Um, just following on from the question earlier about the One Love armbands, it was revealed earlier that Denmark are um, planning to uh, discuss a blanket withdrawal from FIFA alongside other UEFA nations, given the ongoing row over One Love armbands. Uh, is that something that you'd support them doing or um, kind of consider doing yourself as well? Uh, so I can't, can't speak for other countries and decisions they make. Um, you know, and what they feel is the right way to to protest in any kind of social injustice that they feel is being done. Um, you know, the one love our band is an interesting discussion in itself because you know conversations I've had with people from the LGBTQI plus community have already described that messaging as as vague and um, lacking a real kind of statement in, in, in what, what it's actually trying to achieve as well. So, you know, there's conversations to be had from every angle about about these things and. But um, yeah, for, I can't speak on what other countries are, will decide to do and the, those discussions they'll have and they'll make the, the decision that they feel is, is best for them. Uh, Jackson, Luke Doherty, Fox Sports News. You just mentioned before when you were controlling possession, getting into good positions. Can you just explain to us how France stopped you? Because you look so comfortable. How France stopped you actually doing that? Can you out of that rhythm a little bit? Just clever players, experienced players, players that play at the very top level. Um, it's it's an interesting one because you feel they make you feel like you have time. You know they they're so good at playing in these half spaces where they almost invite you to play into certain areas of the pitch and and um, they know exactly you know when to when to punish you when when that when that time comes and that's why they play at the very top level and um, that's, a, that's a lesson for us to learn as well. Um, but yeah, I think that for me, that's probably my feeling within the game was that they, um, as you know, they their energy rose and, and their quality started to shine through. It was also that um, yeah, just that little bit of feeling where they can kind of lure you in and make you feel like you've got that extra bit of time, and then they know exactly when to pounce. And um, yeah, we were punished, you know, on a couple of occasions, you know, for with that exact exact reason. Just on the 50th cap as well, and congrats on that. The header Thank you. went oh so close. Did, yeah. you, did you think? that you had a milestone moment in your milestone match there? Yeah, I had a feeling going in that something would fall for me at some point um, in the game. Um, it's not one I'll be forgetting about any time soon when you have an opportunity to score against the world champions at the World Cup. But, um, you know, I'm hoping there's yeah, two more games to go and, you know, that's what I like to do, getting myself in those goal-scoring positions, late runs into the box. Um, and I know there'll be opportunities for me in the next couple of games. And although that one didn't quite fell a few inches um, the wrong side of the post, but um, you know, I'm confident that there will be more, more opportunities for me as the tournament goes on. Jackson, Sam Lewis from the ABC. Hope you can hear me with this bloody helicopter. Yeah. Um, you spoke yesterday in the mix zone about this idea of bouncing back and being resilient. I'm interested in the psychology of that. Can you speak to how you've learned to deal with these moments over the course of your career and how you can sort of navigate these very individual, private, emotional moments in a group setting like a team? Yeah, it's an interesting one. And uh, part of your question there was as your career has gone on, and that's a big part of um, my, or as you can only speak of this from my experience, but that idea of bouncing back is, is something that does has come to me with time and experience and you know I was a bad one when I was younger for dwelling on games dwelling on moments um, you know stirring on things constantly and and um, you know letting it affect me away from football as well as you know in the footballing environment and you know as your career goes on especially as you know guys in here know that have played in, in the UK when you do have quick turnarounds in games that's a big part of it as well and it's you're almost forced to find that way to to um, get yourself ready to just go again and uh, you know for myself personally that I found different ways of dealing with it throughout my career you know some nights I'll, I'll sit up and watch a full 90 minutes back as soon as I get in the door and just look at individual moments and maybe as you say you see things differently when you watch it back with you know a screen on mute when you're looking at purely tactically and you take the emotion out of it um, you know that's, that's a way I've you know something I've done throughout my career that's, that's helped me get better but you know, for me now, um, as my role has changed as, as a player, you know, 
with my club and, and here with the national team, you know, that focus becomes less individual, as you say, and becomes more on the group and how you can af affect the players around you and uh, younger players and, and, and maybe players who don't, um, don't quite have that um, you know, mentality of being able to just get on with it. Um, and, you know, in this group, we have got a really strong mentality. We've got people around us that have that, that, have that support network as well. And, um, you yeah, know, be able to speak openly about feelings of, of, you know, disappointment in yourself and in your own performance as well and having players around you to lift you back up. Um, you know, there's nothing probably better in a group environment than having that, those mates around you that can just, as you say, lift you back up to that level straight away and, and, and we have that in abundance here. So, um, yeah, for, for us, for us, for us um, you know, we don't, we're not feeling down, we're not, we don't need that, um, don't need to, as I say, over overthink, as I, the word I used before, um, because we've just got that environment that just lifts everybody straight back up to that level to be able to perform again. Hi Jackson, David Weiner from Keep Up. Um, two questions. Um, if you are under the cosh against Tunisia on, on Saturday night, what are the biggest lessons that you'll be able to channel from last night, just before that goal, when you're on the back foot? And secondly, I believe you were in Kaiserslautern as a, as a boy when, when these guys were creating that famous moment. We all knew coming into this tournament that the Tunisia game was going to be like the grand final. What would it be like to be part of a, a win in a moment like that and channeling that kind of experience for the weekend? Yeah, the less, uh, tactically, obviously, there'll be le the lessons learned. Uh, we need to defend crosses better. Um, you know, that's something we'll work on, you know, conceding three goals from, from wide areas is, is um, you know, obviously a very clear clear lesson for us to, to, to learn. Um, and then, obviously, looking at their threats um, when we when we analyse the opposition coming into the next couple of days and looking at what we can do to, to nullify them through through our own structures that we always have defensively. Um, but you obviously have to deal with the crosses better, uh, if I can make that as a simple way to start, because um, you know, disappointing to lose three goals from, from, from those wide areas. Um, and on the other side of things, yeah, obviously lucky enough to have experienced this tournament as a fan and, and now as a player and you know being in that stadium on that day and seeing your heroes create moments of of history and knowing that you're in in a position to be able to do the same um, it's so exciting and it's something we don't we realize and we, we know is there for us um, and you know if we can you know channel channel any part of that um, you know, we, we always talk about soccer as a team and our history and those key moments and big games and big players and, um, you know, for us, the idea of, of, of being able to produce performance that can, that can live, live, live on like, like that day did for me, for, for somebody else is, is, is an exciting prospect and, you know, we'll be out there, uh, you know, obviously with the fight but also, you know, want to bring that quality to, to show that, that we can, you know, keep, uh, can play at that level and, and create that kind of history as well. It's time for one more. Oh, Jackson, David Bash here from SBS. How are you? Oh, okay. um, just wondering, a two-part question. Uh, there were six of the 11 that made their World Cup finals debut last night. H have you spoken to some of the younger players about the way they handled the pressure, what the pressure looks like moving forward, and some of the decision-making and game management and maybe what they can expect out of the Tunisia match. Yeah, well, you know, we, to be honest, it wasn't so much, as you say, it's, it's all pretty raw and fresh. Um, so we haven't really had a chance to, as you say, dissect it too um, intensely. But straight after the game, especially, you know, some of the players that were, the younger players that were on the park, um, they, they, they play well above their years. They're, they're so, uh, the composure they play with, the, the mentality that they have, um, obviously, as you say, the lessons to be learned in terms of the quality of the opposition, um, there was a big lesson to be learned last night, and I'm sure they'll take that very quickly on board and move forward with it, and you know, we'll see improvement again in, in players that are improving so rapidly all the time, and you know, it's so exciting to be a part of, you know, as you say, young player, six players that are you know, first time experiencing playing at this level, and um, you know, they're already streaks ahead of, of, of where I felt I was at that, at that point in my career. So it's exciting to, to help them along that journey and, and see their progression as well.